Hello Wanderers and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gabriela and today we'll be taking a look at my Skyrim load order on the Xbox Series S for Fall 2024. I've been curating this particular list of mods for a few months now and I've been so happy with the stability and variety of the changes it makes that the time has finally come to share it with you once again. This list will focus mainly on lore-friendly improvements to the environment, NPCs, dialogue and quests, graphics and gameplay mechanics, among other things. As always, just a small disclaimer that this is the load order that works for my game and my system, and your experience and opinions may differ from mine, which is totally cool. You're always welcome to share your thoughts in the comments below, just please remember to be kind. So, with spooky season finally upon us, it's time to cozy up with a warm drink, grab a snack, and let's play some Skyrim. What I really wanted from this build, leaning into the fantasy aspects of Skyrim, was a dark fairy tale vibe with witchy elements, realistic NPC behaviors, expansion of lore accurate flora and fauna, questing and collecting legendary items for display, highlighting homesteading, base building, and free placement decoration mechanics as a nice way to relax after a good battle. The goal was basically to optimize my load order to include more RPG and simulation elements for the sake of immersion. Since I never had a doubt that Skyrim could do it all, it was just a matter of fitting those puzzle pieces together into a stable load order. So without further ado, let's take a look at the list in our creations menu. Topping off the list, we have Arthmore's unofficial patch, which addresses a number of bugs and issues across the vanilla game. Campfire, complete camping systems for the camping experience in Skyrim that we deserve. Cheat Room is a very versatile tool, especially for consoles. And a quality world map just delivers a more visually appealing and more detailed version of the current vanilla map. Moving on to player and NPC skin and texture modifications, I like to use Caliente's Beautiful Bodies, Bijin All-in-One, Optimized with Truvia for Males, and Realistic RS Children that also adds Elven Children. The notorious Blue Khajiit Inigo is my current companion on this playthrough, and he works really well alongside my preferred horse management mods, which include Swift Steed Stables and Convenient Horses. Narrative Loot is one of my favorite mods for adding treasures and clutter into the game, really expands upon what's already available, and Royal Armory and Unique Uniques both do a great job of upgrading and detailing the weapons in the game. On a similar note, clothing and armor get a rich, lore-appropriate refresh based on mods such as Fashions of the Fourth Era, Imitations, Bandolier Bags and Pouches, as well as other bits and bobs that add things like accessories and backpacks, new textures, and just general variety. Ars Metallica is another must-have mod when it comes to expanding the smithing and smelting in-game. Wearable Lanterns is a great mod that will help you navigate through the darkest dungeons with its equipable functionality. The next section contains buildings, player homes, and shops added to the game, beginning with one of my favorite mods, Inns and Taverns by Menethadriel, which adds a variety of rest stops all across Skyrim and is perfect for a survival playthrough. Eleonora's Beginner Shack in Riverwood is one of my favorite bases for a new playthrough, and as my character levels up, I'll usually cycle through some of the amazing and lightweight creations that I've collected through the years. So there's a lot of great homes here, and I'll usually rehome followers to them. I won't necessarily live in all of them, quote unquote, but it is really nice to get to see what people add into the game and how unique it is and how well it fits into Skyrim. I also like adding a variety of specialized shops and merchants to the game, such as Bitter Breeze Books, Giselle Whiterun Clothier, The Traveling Merchant of Magnificent Statues, and Sketchy Shrova Skuma Shop. 
Likewise, mods that build upon the Bard's College or add a functioning orphanage to the game are always welcome in my mod list. I also like mods that allow you to rehabilitate and renovate spaces in the game that usually stay kind of dead after the vanilla game is done with them, such as restoring the Aretino residence, help the Warrens in Markarth, or lighting the 7,000 steps. Mods like Interact, Build, Decorate, and Tiny Houses were crucial for upgrading the decoration mechanics in my game, and I'll never look back after being able to place static objects and have them not tumble off of the table every time I walk by. Next up, we have the visual replacer for Serana that I've grown most attached to, and this is a nice light one, so it's great to keep in my load order and not mess with her too much this time around. The Priestess of Arcade Follower by Imperial Agent 1992 is a nice starter follower found in Falkreath. We also have a couple of loyal canine companions, as well as some quality of dog life mods for them. A lot of these smaller mods, such as Cross Chopper, Amazing Follower Tweaks, or some of the rehoming mods, just make life in Skyrim so much easier and allow me to craft the Skyrim of my dreams. Of course, this is also true for bigger mods, a good example of which is Birds of Skyrim, which, although small in size, adds an incredible amount of different birds, sounds, and just general environment in Skyrim that I think is truly amazing and something that I can't imagine playing without. Moving on to the choices I made for graphics, I really enjoy Super SMIM, which adds the right amount of aesthetic changes that I desire while not sacrificing the performance for it. In tandem with enhanced texture detail, surreal lighting, and the Skyland all-in-one and its LODs, I feel like this is definitely a graphics load order that I'm happy with and that I don't need to make any changes to for a while. And finally, the last stretch, we have Immersive Movement, which basically just allows you to move around like a normal person in-game, Realistic Conversations and Immersive Citizens, which changes NPC behavior and conversations around you, which is really important if you've played Skyrim for a long time, and Young Lover's Voice Overhaul is one of the best spouse and, I guess, lover friendship overhauls available out there, in my opinion. You should definitely give it a try if you want to revamp that aspect of the game a little too. So now that we've had a nice detailed look at the load order, let's jump into my game and see the changes that it's made.
Good morning, my darling. I have a wonderful meal ready to help you start the day. By the way, don't think I've forgotten what I promised you earlier. Here, take this to go with the meal. I love you, my dear. Something's wrong with the moon dial here. Some of the crests are missing and the dial is askew. I didn't even know the crests could be removed. Maybe my mother's trying to tell us something. I'm telling you, there's something strange with the moon dial. Well, as far as I'm aware, it's the only one in existence. The previous owners of the castle had a sundial in the courtyard, and obviously that didn't appeal to my mother. She persuaded an elven artisan to make some improvements. You can see the plates that show the phases of the moons, Nasser and Secunda. That's the thing. What's the point of a moon dial? I always wondered why she didn't just have the whole thing ripped out. But she loved it. <sighs> I don't know. I guess it's like having a piece of art, if you're into that sort of thing. been in those tunnels before, but I bet they'd run right under the courtyard and into the tower ruins. Well, at least we're getting closer. Let's go. She was deep in her necromancy. I mean, she taught me everything I know. And I had no idea she had a setup like this. Look at all this. She must have spent years collecting these components. And what's this thing? I'm not sure about this circle, but it's obviously something. Let's take a look around. There has to be something here that tells us where she's gone. My mother was meticulous about her research. If we can find her notes, there might be some hints in there. I remember she used to keep a small journal. See if you can dig it up. I don't know. Certainly not longevity. Kind of a waste of time for a vampire. Not that I ever saw. My mother had a bit of a thing for magical constructs. Not... not what you're thinking. She just found them fascinating. My throat is no longer in pain and I can breathe properly again. The divines are on my side. Ha! Take that, Periite. I win. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for this look at my Skyrim Road Order on the Xbox Series S for Fall 2024. You guys are awesome and you always have my love and my gratitude. Please remember to like the video and subscribe if you're new here. And until the next one, friends, stay safe and happy wandering. Dragons were never gone. They were just invisible and very, very quiet.